everyone. This is Adriana, and we are back with our Heart to Heart Astrology Podcast. This is my grandmother, Caitlin, joining me. We are granddaughter and grandmother from the U.S. to the U.K. And our Heart to Heart perspective. Uh, heart to with, heart. Yes, <laughs> with astrology and any of the energy that's happening. So if you guys are new here, uh, we welcome you to whatever channel you're watching this on. You might be watching this on my Starry Sky Readings YouTube, um, or you might be seeing this from Caitlin's channel, Bhakti Galactic Healing. If you aren't, though, please go check out her channel. It's a new channel she's created, so please go subscribe to her there. Or you may be joining us from the Galactic Astrology page. So please, yeah, check out all three if you can. And uh, like and subscribe. subscribe. Like, <laughs> comment. We like to interact. Yes, all we, we enjoy that. that. Appreciate yes, we appreciate you being here with us, and we have Absolutely. again lots to talk about. If you haven't seen our first video uh, previous to this, uh, we talked about the first two weeks of June, um, what was going on. So now we're going to be talking about the last two weeks of June, so the second half of June, and. Happy almost summer solstice. We have summertime yes. fast approaching. We love the sun yes. here. We <laughs> so Ooh, excited for that. <laughs> I've got on this beautiful yellow top for the yes. sun. Very I love uh, the sun ray. Golden, yeah. <laughs> golden ray. Yeah. Without any further ado, I will go ahead and start talking about what's going on June 17th. So Mercury and Venus is moving into beautiful Cancer. We're entering summertime, so we always kick off the summer season with that Cancer energy, that very loving, nurturing, uh, sensitive, ultra-sensitive Cancer energy. So Mercury, the planet of communication, and Venus, the planet of love, are joining up together into this beautiful water sign. So this is also going to be these uh, two planets are going to be conjunct fixed star Polaris and conjunct the fixed star Beetlejuice. Not to be confused with the Beetlejuice movie. <laughs> but I wonder if that's where they got it from. <laughs> yeah. And Enzo says he thinks it's pronounced Beetlegeist, but I like Beetlejuice. I think it's more fun. <laughs> I know. I think Beetlejuice, we got to stick with that, right? <laughs> yeah. I think like, it's cool. I like juice. So we'll go with Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, fixed star Polaris, as you may know, is our North Star. And actually, it's, mm -hmm. it's not always our North Star. It's only for a certain period of time. It is for a very, very long time, though. So people have been using this star to navigate on ships and voyages for so many years, thousands of years. So, you know, this is... A very important star, Polaris. I'm going to actually share what this looks like too. So here it is. We have Venus and Mercury together here. Um, this is the UK chart, by the way. So it might look slightly different in the United States or wherever else you may be watching this from, but either way, it's still same thing applies. So it is making this conjunction here with Polaris and Beetlejuice. So let's focus on Polaris first, as these stars are in separate constellations here. So let's look at Polaris. Um, this star is asking us where we need guidance, particularly when it comes to our relationships with the planet Venus and the way we communicate or express with the planet Mercury. Cancer being in these planets gives an emotional and nurturing energy. It really feels like this softening of our words and heart. It's a very soft energy I get from this. Where is your heart guiding you to go? Like how the ancients use this star for their own navigation. Where do you feel guided to go when it comes to your relationship or if you're seeking a relationship, what you're looking for in one, or how you are expressing yourself, where are you being guided to express yourself? 
And with this uh, conjunction to Beetlejuice now, we'll look at Beetlejuice. This brings great fortune with this bright star. Now, uh, Beetlejuice, you mentioned this previously in a video, Caitlin, that this is actually a dying star, um, but it is very bright because it is a dying star. I believe a red giant, if I remember correctly, or, or a super red mm -hmm. giant, something like that. <laughs> but it's basically... I'm not sure that. Yes, and you say the light that you know emits from it um, can maybe one day brighten our skies in the future, which I found really interesting if that were to happen. There's maybe. no way to know. There's no way to know when that will happen. Right. Um, Robert right. Robert E. Grant, um, he's a polymath, um, and he studies all of this. And if you check into some of his videos, you'll find that information about Beetlejuice. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so with this star, even though it is a dying star, it brings so much importance and a, it really is influencing the energy of these planets here being in Cancer. So mm -hmm. it brings great fortune, especially with marriages. Honestly, I, this, I do some intuitive, predictive astrology. I feel like this is a really great time for marriages as you know, I'll go into actually talking about this soon with the summer solstice. June is the month of love and marriages because Juno, the goddess mm -hmm. Juno, was associated with um, the the goddess of marriage, Juno or Hera, as she's called in Greek mythology. So, uh, yes, it is a really great time. So if anyone's planning to get married, this is a very nice time for this um, to be happening here. You're really getting the benefits here of this. Uh, great blessings here for marriages and just relationships in general, too. The ancient mm -hmm. Egyptians associated this star beetle juice to the god Osiris. So themes mm -hmm. of rebirth and the afterlife are at play here. If you guys aren't familiar with the, the mythology of Osiris, he was killed by his, uh, by his brother and actually his wife, Isis, is the one who finds all his uh, pieces of his body. It sounds a little gruesome, but... <laughs> puts them back together basically and revives him. So this star is associated with Osiris here who was revived. So what this is an omen of revival in our personal lives. What needs mm -hmm. to be revived? Mm -hmm. Love will be revived or reignited um, for mm -hmm. those of us already in relationships and marriages or those seeking new connections. Um, mm -hmm. There will there will be many, um, or there will also be a reveal too. I feel again, this is kind of intuitive predictions coming through with me. Um, more reveals, so to speak, through media uh, of some sort that's been kind of hidden here, swept under the rug, um, as Pluto is still in retrograde, which is kind of helping with that energy here. Uh, yep. So if you have been stuck in dead energy, this is a great time to come back to life using the mm -hmm. energy of both of these stars, Polaris and Beetlejuice, to help you in the right direction. So it's like you're having this revival within yourself, and Polaris is helping guide you back on your path. So if you've been feeling like you've been kind of straying off the path or confused on where you're going, what direction you're heading in life, this energy is really helping to put you back on track here and remind you who you are and who you want to be or who you, your potential of who you can become here. Okay, so this is actually a lot of this will apply what I've just said to the summer solstice, which I will uh, talk about soon. So a lot of what I've just shared will apply to that. Um, but I'll go ahead and give the next alignment over to Caitlin and what you wanted to share. Okay. Um, I'm going to be talking about the um, moon, full moon in Capricorn. That's going to be coming up on June 21st. So actually it's the day after the solstice. Um, mm, just but, after. Yeah. Just, just after. like so close. I mean, that the energy is still there. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to mention that on the actual solstice, um, if you are in the Northeast Ohio area, if you contact me, you can reach me at universallight at att.net. Um, 
that's a great, good email. Um, and then I can tell you about what we have available, but we do a wonderful gathering on summer solstice and teachings and we have a fire circle. So if you're in our area and want to hook up and connect on uh, do something in person, instead of everything being on this, this little box here, mm -hmm. um, that would be a lot of fun. So, um, let me share my screen. Yes. There's Beetlejuice right here. Okay, good. We've said it three times, um, so hopefully he doesn't appear. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sorry. We get my glasses. Like, what I'm going to do. Um, well, the, the first full moons, because there's going to be two of them in Capricorn. And um, and I want Adrian and I to talk a little bit towards the end of our video here, but I have uh, cancer rising. Adriana has cancer rising. We both have our sons in Capricorn. So we are having a lot of alignments in June and July for both of us. Uh, in fact, we're, we're going to align. In, <laughs> we're going to align in person because we're going to next video for July is going to be live with us together. I can't wait to hug you. Yes, I'm so <laughs> excited. Be oh my goodness. That's like such a dream come true. We've missed you so much. Um, but the first full moon, um, in Capricorn is the strawberry moon on June 21st at two degrees of cancer. And the second one is called the buck moon. And that'll be on July 21st at 6, 17 AM. And that's at 29 degrees of cancer. So both of these moons are Capricorn and cancer combination. So it's kind of a double your pleasure or double your challenges. So we have a choice through our perspective. If you are honoring self-care and self-love in your life, you may double your pleasure. The constellation of Orion and the fixed star Betelgeuse are in opposition to the full moon in Capricorn uh, on June 21st with the two degree orb. So what does this mean? So if we look over here again, we see Betelgeuse here and here's the sun right here. So the constellation of Orion, the hunter brings to mind the hermetic principle of as above, so below. The polarity, that means duality, that exists on earth may reflect Orion. The masculine principle of service to self and the feminine principle of service to anyone but the self went on for eons in Orion. So if we apply here the theory that time doesn't exist, then it is still happening right now, as it is certainly being reflected here on earth. The fixed stars of the Orion belt hold incarnations of the lightest of most angelic beings and high frequency beings, but it can have also the darkest of the dark and lowest frequency beings. So again, there's that polarity. We talked about that in the last video for the beginning of June and how we need to balance. Um, a card came up from Lissa Royal Holt's deck about that, the uh, polarity issue. So when we find that balance, that's the way to go. So let's zero in on Betelgeuse and this opposition. So we have um, with the full moon. So the full moon is over here, okay? And here, here we are with Betelgeuse. Um, now, what is the traits of Betelgeuse? Um, it's the ability to have natural charisma, talent, tendencies for success, fame, ability to embody joy, determination to succeed, and my favorite part, a sense of never giving up on your dreams. So the good news here with, with this alignment, you see it right here, is the sun and Betelgeuse are conjunct, okay? So we have this opposition with the moon, but we've got this great conjunction over here, okay? So um, these beautiful traits are readily available to you if you choose them. So here's where the challenge could arise is with that opposition to the moon. Um, it's So if, I'm gonna give an example. I think that's the best way to do it. It's just give an example. So you may be quite successful here and have great talent. You have a lot of charisma and maybe even fame in some way, but you don't feel it on the inside. So this opposition may bring up feelings of not being enough, even though you are quite successful. So what could you do to transform this opposition? Pretty simple. Believe in yourself. 
don't focus on what is coming from the outside. Focus completely on your inside. And you will receive the gifts of your talents, charisma, and fame through the perspective of self-realization. Self-realization. Nothing to do with self-ego um, inflating. I'm talking soul self realization. So the most important thing you may realize is that other people's approval, validation, or acceptance can just be an enhancement. We don't have to have a neediness or necessity for that because you already approve, validate, and accept yourself. Releasing all unrealistic expectations you put on yourself is the key to healing this pattern of not believing in yourself. So that's what I wanted to share about the full moon. Uh, I also noticed too, just to add that there's a cancer stellium uh, going on too. Um, lots of uh, nice water energy to kick off the summer. <laughs> really nice to yeah. see. Yeah. Yes. I'm sharing my screen. There we go. <laughs> you said the next time will be July. Was that right? July 21st. Yeah. Ah, both on the 21st too. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 29 degrees. So different mm -hmm. experience when it's in the higher deacons. Mm. Yeah. That's more true. spiritual. Yeah. The summer mm -hmm. solstice. Yeah. So it's, so it's technically on June 20th, but correct me if I'm wrong. I think the full day of the longest day is actually the 21st. Is that correct? You know, it just depends. What's the it time for the summer solstice? So it's at 9.51 p.m. Uh, UK time or 4.51 Eastern time for the United States, okay. East, Eastern United States. So okay. I'm I'm not sure if I it'll actually be the full be the 20th, sun, yeah. the 20th. Okay. Yeah. I, I, it probably it, would be then. Yeah. yeah. It was after, there might be places in the world where it comes in after midnight or something. Yeah, then it That's would be. true. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is, yes, the, of course, the longest uh, day of the year it's considered uh, for, for summer. Of course, there's yes. one in winter as well. So, yes, uh, it is then, of course, going into cancer, as we mentioned earlier. It's the start of cancer season. Happy birthday, cancers. <laughs> Even <laughs> nice uh, summer solstice. <laughs> Cancer risings too. <laughs> I know our chart yeah. is very similar. Yeah. It's and so cancer funny. moons. You have to congratulate them too. <laughs> yes, at cancer moons too. You'll be feeling this. So I'm actually going to share a little bit of a pagan perspective on it. Um, I don't consider myself fully pagan, but I do take a lot of the teachings from it. I personally don't like to just label myself as one thing because I think there's so many good things, you know. Oh, yeah out of so many yeah. different spiritual practices, but um, I, I am very heavily influenced in that, especially in my ancestral work that I do and honoring my ancestral deities. So I am going to share a, kind of a pagan perspective and a little bit of history on it and go into the astrology, of course, too. So uh, in Celtic paganism, and you have Celtic roots as well, uh, Caitlin, with your, your lineage, your ancestry, the summer solstice uh, signify not only warmth and a good harvest, but also new beginnings and fertility. Sometimes it is modernly known as a litha, depending on your practices. It's more of a, a Wiccan association uh, or in Scandinavian practice, it's uh, known as midsummer. The Celtic god, at, excuse me if I'm mispronouncing his name, uh, Lug, L-U-G-H, was and is said to sometimes be associated uh, with midsummer uh, mm -hmm. because of his role as a harvest god, but he also had many other facets as a lot of these gods and deities had many, many different facets to them. So I found this was interesting because he also is uh, the correspondent to the Roman god Mercury or Hermes mm -hmm. in the Greek um the greek uh god and hellenistic uh perspective so that is interesting to me because the sun during this solstice as i spoke about earlier will be pairing up right next to mercury 
So it's, um, I think, very relevant, uh, that energy joining up for, um, for Lug or Mercury, you know, Hermes, however you want to say. But with the sun pairing up, we also have Venus, who is the goddess of love. Many of us know that. Also corresponds with Juno for the summer solstice. June, Juno, like I mentioned earlier, that is where that comes from. She's the goddess of marriage, uh, also known as Hera in Greek mythology. So marriages were always very relevant and significant during the month of June because of, because of this reason. Maybe because of warm weather too. They thought this is a perfect time. <laughs> So, uh, and blessings of not only marriages and love, but even children as well. Hence, again, popular wedding month, June. The Celtic goddess Freya is the equivalent of this correspondence as well. So she's, so we got Freya, we got Venus, we got a lot of those gals all mixed in together. Like They're very, yes, lots okay. of divine feminine, <laughs> yes. Lots of love. Lots of fertility, have the, <laughs> that, that masculine energy coming in with Mercury uh, being there. And so I think it's significant that there's that alignment pairing up with the summer solstice and having Mercury right there too. So what does this mean? This brings a very powerful solstice when it comes to information and communication. And I feel a sense, I guess the best way I can describe it is an activation uh, by the sun, mm -hmm. love getting activated. I think love definitely is key here. I will also, um, I'm going to share my screen too. Here we go. Here's a summer solstice. So there yeah. we have our sun and cancer, of course, to start off the summer solstice with Venus and Mercury here. Okay. Yes. So yes, um, on, like I said, on top of the fixed star alignments, uh, to Polaris and Betelgeuse. So this only doubles down on what I previously just discussed about these stars with uh, Mercury and Venus. Now the sun is shining on them and highlighting powerful themes of information coming out as well as, as, well as what's important or most important, which I think is love, to be honest. Not to be a romantic, <laughs> but I think uh, I always think love is so important. I th maybe that's because I have a Libra moon <laughs> and a Cancer rising, but I think uh, love, love is, is one of the most important things in this world. It's one of the most beautiful yeah, things. Love is to have. Yes, love is. All There's nothing more than that. <laughs> peace, peace, peace. Yeah, another vibration. It actually. Peace has the higher vibratory energy than even mm. love. Mm. Amazing, but peace, the, it is the highest vibration. So peace and mm. love. That's a good point to, yeah, peace and love. <laughs> they knew what they were talking be about able to in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had gotten this uh, again from Lissa Royal Holt, uh, Galactic Heritage Cards. And this is um, Solar Consciousness. And um, down at the bottom, it says uh, from the solar system. And um, so it, it just this card to me is the kind of the epitome of the solar consciousness is being connected with our highest self. So our highest self is kind of like, I like to call it the yellow, golden, orange soul spirit sun of our being, which would be a way to call our highest self. And so an opportunity to connect with that high level being. If you're already connected, you're going to feel a lot more downloads coming in or, or you know, sense them, whatever Claire you use coming in. But um, it's an opportunity if you're not feeling connected to your highest self or solar consciousness. The sun is emitting so many flares and trying to wake us up. Um, and so it's an opportunity to wake up within this energy. If we already have it and have awakened, it can feel like a little bit of an overload. So you've got to do things to calm down, um, maybe, you know, kind of go a little bit into the dark, so to speak, not in a negative way, but, you know, doing activities of uh, meditation, deeper meditation, quiet time, 
uh, going within type of experience because we have so much light already. So, but if we're trying to attract more light, this is the opportunity. That's what that card is about. And what a good opportunity it is with it being, you know, the summer solstice. Mm -hmm. So I've just uh, changed my background. <laughs> I meant to do so it. Uh, I meant to do it earlier, actually. I just totally forgot. I took this picture, actually, um, in Stonehenge when I visited back in 2017. And Beautiful. thought it's fitting, yeah, for the summer solstice, too. I think some Very. people uh, still can go there to oh. practice uh, the summer oh, solstice. Absolutely. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think you have to get special permission now. But, yeah, it's, um, mm -hmm. you know, if it's a practice that's been going on since forever <laughs> yep. celebrating the sun so i will now pull our tarot message around this beautiful summer solstice so i'm going to go ahead and give this a quick shuffle here i'm using the same deck i used from last time my very cute dreaming cat tarot actually before i do it i'm going to use my cleansing spray that i mentioned in my last in, in the last video we did and i'm just going to go ahead and do a quick spray, so some for me. Remove any negativity from my life, cleansing my path, and some for you. <laughs> Removing any Ooh, negativity from my life, cleansing my path, and summer yes. solstice blessings to you all. Yes. I'm pulling this live for you guys, so I'm going to shuffle my cards. What do we need to know? What does the collective need to know around this summer solstice? Oh, got something right away. Jumped right out. It's the sun. Uh, we, have, <laughs> <laughs> we have the eight of swords here with temperance. Okay, so this, this is a little bit of a healing going on. Some of us need the sun to come in to heal us. I see the eight of swords here. So some of us are mm -hmm. tangled up in some in some things. So this might be a message for a particular group of you. As we have temperance on the bottom of the deck, temperance is a card of having faith in yourself, having patience mm -hmm. and healing. So there's some mm -hmm. things, are, what are we tangled up in here? Like this cat and this ball of yarn. <laughs> what are we tangled up in? Are we entangled in things out of our control and do we need to let it go and release that especially with the full moon and capricorn yeah I mentioned we could be either caught up in challenges mm -hmm. or we could be receiving a lot of prosperity and goodness so we have a choice mm -hmm. in how we view it our perspective so that card really resonates with that Beautiful. What, yes. What things do we need to let go of that are out of our control? Sometimes you have to just let it go. And especially yeah. if it's something too, that needs uh, addressing that needs to be healed, have patience with yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. Okay. Let yes. the healing come in, especially with the summer solstice here. And again, with the full moon following it up the next day, let it go. If you are doing some sort of, I would recommend actually doing some sort of fire type of thing, like a campfire, yep. even if you just do like a small little fire, just you can write it down mm -hmm. on a piece of paper, what you want to let go of and toss it in that, that fire there <laughs> and let yeah, it that's go. The yeah. I've talked about that on my, um, the Pleiades big love video that I did recently. Mm -hmm. You might want to check that out. And we talk about that there about the, um, Letting go is so important, and especially with the fire. You can just, everything you've scribbled out, you use your last dominant hand, and you mm -hmm. just let it go. And the energy is coming through here, right to your hand, and you're not trying to write it perfectly. You're just letting the emotions come out and then pop that into the fire. And we'll be doing that at our uh, fire circle on uh, June uh, 20th. And again, if you're in the Northeast Ohio area, if you contact me, um, can uh, contact me at, at uh, Bhakti Galactic Healing. That's my YouTube channel. Um, but uh, my email is universallight at att.net. So would love to hear from you. And uh, Adriana is Starry Sky Readings is her connection. And we can do any reports, readings that you're interested in to go deeper into your astrology. And yes. then Adriana offers mm -hmm. her beautiful tarot readings. 
Um, and, she, and as you can see from these videos, she's very accurate, very intuitive. Highly recommend you check her oh, out. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, Caitlin, recently, if you haven't seen our other video, she was recently uh, certified in galactic astrology as a QSG pr practitioner. So she's, you're doing it all now. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it's, it. It's going been... deep. <laughs> it's I've been <laughs> I also oh, yeah. do Reiki. I'm a yes. Shiki Ryoho Reiki master and uh currently working with groups um and doing attunements. We have uh, one coming up on June 30th. That one's completely full, but we will probably have mm -hmm. one more. And then this is the 2024-2025 um year for people to go through Reiki one, Reiki two and master. Um, and we do it over a year, at least a year or more period of time. We don't rush it and you get a ton of training. I, I go to great levels to train people to become Reiki master teachers like us. Busy Capricorns. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> well, yes, it's, it's really feels like the energy is honestly very, very good for June. I, I really don't see anything, you know, bad necessarily there is a we do have saturn retrograde actually starting the 29th we might talk more mm -hmm. about that in our next video um yes. but yep. it's you know really though most of the month of june though feels very positive in my in my opinion it feels really good big love <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's a it's a month of love definitely <laughs> well thank you all for watching as we always say, please do like this and res and if it resonates, please comment down below or if you have any questions too, please feel free to put them there. We love to read your comments or help answer any questions you may have. We'll and subscribe to all of our channels. Subscribe to all of our channels because we do all videos that you wouldn't see on the Galactic Astrology as well. So we have some yeah, fun check things. Check all out. <laughs> Thank you. Namaste. Thank you for watching and happy, have a happy summer solstice.